The brain is an amazing organ. It changes itself to adapt to daily challenges we face, and sometimes it's even compared to a supercomputer, but it's actually much more complex and efficient. In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about brain breaks. I'm going to share some facts about the brain in the style of a brain break. I'm going to share some research as to why brain breaks are so important for everybody. At the end of the video, I'm going to share five of my favorite brain breaks that are quick and easy to use in the classroom. Salut! Welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Kate Dumichel and I'm a Canadian teacher. I'm the creator of a YouTube channel that's called Meta Mindset and I make brain break videos in French. I also have this second channel where I make videos like this one for educators like you. If you're interested in learning about brain breaks and other resources you can use in your French classrooms, you may want to subscribe to Meta Mindset newsletter. If you subscribe today, you'll get a free French brain break resource freebie. So to start off this video, we're gonna do a little bit of exercise. Why? Because in the words of John Rady in his book, Spark, if you move your body, your mind won't have any choice but to follow. Exercise is the single most powerful tool that you have to optimize your brain function. By the end of this video, I want you to think of exercise as something that you get to do. And I want you to think of it as a tool in your teacher or educator toolbox. In her book, Move the Body, Heal the Mind, Dr. Jennifer Heiss says that the boost you get from exercising can help keep you focused for up to two hours afterward. So stand up and get ready to move. Let's take a brain break. Test your knowledge about the brain. Game rules. What your brain learns stays in your brain. Just kidding. Share it with everyone. Pick an answer and do the associated activity and have fun. The prefrontal cortex is located at the very front of the brain. It is responsible for many qualities that make us human, such as planning, sequencing, rehearsing, evaluating, and understanding. It is also the home of our working memory, which is important for decision making. The human brain has an incredible ability to think, create, plan, and make decisions. It allows us to think about what we've learned, imagine how we can improve, and set our plans in motion. What does the prefrontal cortex mainly help you with? Feelings and expressing emotions? Thinking, planning, and making important decisions? Or remembering where you put your things? What does the prefrontal cortex mainly help you with? That's right, thinking, planning, and making important decisions. How does the prefrontal cortex contribute to your learning abilities? It helps you remember your favorite songs. It controls your taste buds so you can enjoy new foods. It allows you to adapt and learn new things. How does the prefrontal cortex contribute to your learning abilities? It allows you to adapt and learn new things. The amygdala is a small part of the brain with a big job. It processes emotions. It's the part of your brain that detects danger. It also plays a role in behavior, emotional control, and learning. The amygdala is the brain's panic button. Its job is to assign intensity to possible threats to the body's equilibrium. It processes emotions, particularly fear, and any intense emotional state. The amygdala activates an emergency stress response, sometimes called the fight or flight response. It engraves strong emotions into memory, so you can avoid dangers in the future. The amygdala helps you with processing strong emotions like fear and excitement, controlling your body's movements, or remembering facts for a test. The amygdala helps you with processing strong emotions like fear and excitement. Which animal analogy represents the amygdala? A friendly puppy that makes you happy, a wise owl that helps you make decisions, a guard dog that protects you from danger.
Which animal analogy represents the amygdala? A guard dog that protects you from danger. The hippocampus is part of the brain that is important for many aspects of learning and memory. Because of its relationship with cortisol, it is vulnerable to stress, mood, and aging. It is also one of the only two structures that produces its own new nerve cells. The hippocampus is crucial for learning and memory. It helps us form and consolidate long-term memories. Researchers think this happens in the hippocampus during sleep. When we exercise, the brain is supplied with a miracle grow that promotes growth, function, and survival of brain cells. Why is the hippocampus essential for daily life? It keeps your lungs and heart functioning optimally. It helps you learn new things and remember them. It helps you find your way around your neighborhood. Why is the hippocampus essential for daily life? It helps you learn new things and remember them. These three parts of the brain work together to keep us safe, help us learn, and allow us to keep a handle on our emotions. Taking a break from learning may seem counterproductive, but when we learn, biological changes happen. These transformations take a lot of time and a lot of energy. In his book, How We Learn, Stanislas Dehaene says that a young child's brain consumes up to 50% of the body's energy balance. That's a lot of energy. So it's important that we take breaks. Now, what is a brain break? Essentially, it's when you take a break from an activity that requires your attention and your concentration. Research has shown time and time again that taking frequent breaks reduces stress and anxiety, it improves focus, and it improves productivity. You heard that right. Taking breaks makes you more productive. And while it's doing all of that, it's also teaching kids to self-regulate. Let's say, for example, you're doing a math lesson and you say, okay, everybody, get up, we're gonna jump for a minute. You might be wondering, why would I take the students away from a lesson? And why would I take them away from learning? One thing that is important to realize is that brains are never really resting, even when you're sleeping. A study that was done at the NIH in June, 2021, showed that during breaks, from a new learned activity, the brain was flipping the information learned from the cortex to the hippocampus very quickly. So during the small breaks that you give, the students' brains aren't actually resting. Their brains are processing and replaying the things that they have just learned. And the break helps them compress the information that they learned and put those things into long-term memory. One of my favorite books is called Spark, written by John J. Rady, MD. In his book, there's a lot of information about the positive impacts of exercise on cognitive function and mental health. The research mentioned in Spark shows that physical activity sparks biological changes that encourage brain cells to bind to one another. There's more neural activity in fit kids' brains, more neurons involved in attention are recruited, and fit kids are more likely to slow down and check their work, which means there's more prefrontal cortex activity. Some more research from the book Spark says that in 2004, a panel of 13 researchers in the fields ranging from kinesiology to pediatrics conducted a massive review of 850 studies about the effects of physical activity on school children. The results showed that exercise has a positive impact on memory, concentration, classroom behavior, mood, attention, self-esteem, and social skills. And when I I look at that, I think, wow, that's all the things that I need help with in the classroom. According to the Government of Canada, children 5 to 11 years of age should be getting one hour of moderate to vigorous physical activity every day. Moderate physical activity means that you're breathing harder and your heart rate increases. Today, we're going for a little hike. Got a weight vest on. And I'm going to take video of the cool stuff that I see. Vigorous physical activity means that you may not be able to say more than a few words without taking a breath. Okay, so here I am, almost downtown. Um, I ran a little bit over a mile and your heart rate increases even more. The meta-analysis that I just mentioned also agrees with the Government of Canada recommendations and says that children should be exercising one hour per day. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why should you, as a classroom teacher, care if kids get enough exercise? I know as a primary teacher, I always feel like I don't have enough time in the day to cover all the learning objectives. Even so, I always make time for breaks, especially exercise break. 
and here's why. Exercise not only primes our state of mind, it influences learning at a cellular level, and it improves the brain's potential to log in and process new information. The body has chemical communicators called neurotransmitters. They carry messages from one cell to the next. They act as regulators of the signaling process and everything that the brain does. You may have already heard of some of these neurotransmitters. Serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Here's a quick overview of what the neurotransmitters do. Serotonin influences the body's mood, impulsivity, anger, and aggressiveness. Norepinephrine influences attention, perception, motivation, and arousal. Dopamine influences learning, reward, attention, and movement. The thing I really want you to know about all of these is that they're not always balanced. Guess what can balance the neurotransmitters? You guessed it. Exercise balances these neurotransmitters along with the rest of the neurochemicals in the brain. The next thing I want to mention is another master class of molecules that over the past 25 years or so has dramatically changed our understanding of connections in the brain, specifically how they change and grow. This thing that I want to mention is called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF for short. BDNF is in the hippocampus, the area of the brain that is related to memory and learning. Why am I telling you this? It's being dubbed as the miracle grow for the brain. It is the crucial biological link between thought, emotion, and movement. It improves the function of the neurons. It encourages growth of the neurons. It strengthens and protects the neurons against the natural process of cell death. BDNF is a necessary ingredient for making new cells. So without BDNF, the brain cannot take in new information. Another important thing to know is that exercise increases the levels of BDNF in the brain. Now, when should you use breaks? I recommend doing a physical activity break before you're going to present new information to students or if you want the students to be thinking and paying attention during a lesson. Why is that? As I mentioned earlier in the video, after exercising, your brain is as sharp as it can be. Immediately following exercise, Oxygenated blood rushes into your prefrontal cortex and helps your brain perform executive functions. Jennifer Heiss says that within the first 15 minutes of light, moderate, and vigorous intensity exercise, the same boost in oxygenated blood rushes into the prefrontal cortex, but more oxygenated blood rushes in the longer and the harder you exercise. How long should a brain break be? Even five minute exercise breaks can be very effective. Research shows that they are more effective than no breaks and sedentary breaks, but definitely more is better. I like to put brain breaks into five different categories. Games, sensory breaks, skill building breaks, relaxing breaks, and exercising breaks. Here are my top five brain breaks. I'm gonna show you one from each category. For the energy break, one of the breaks that I put in the freebie is called the battery. And so at first, you're gonna start off slowly touching your left elbow to your right knee and your right elbow to your left knee. And then as you get better at it, you're going to start speeding up and then you're going to do it as vigorously as possible. So you're kind of gonna do start off very slow, then medium, then fast. And then, so this one is called a windmill. So what you're gonna be doing is feet shoulder width apart, spread your hands out wide, and then you're going to bend over at the waist and touch your left hand to your right toes and your right hand to your left toes. And you will repeat that a bunch of times very slowly. One of my exercise brain breaks that I like that you don't need a video for, you don't need any material and you can do that very quickly. This one I've made a lot of videos for. I know it's very popular in the class. Basically, you can do rock, paper, scissors versus the kids. So anybody that loses has to sit down or you can have everybody get a partner and then they have to switch partners each time. You can have the winner has to jump up and down or do something and the loser has to do a yoga pose, for example, for 30 seconds. And you guys can all do that together and you don't necessarily need a video, but there are a whole bunch of meta mindset videos that you could use. Um, I've even made a new one where you can do human rock, paper, scissors, where you jump up and down saying rock, paper, scissors, and rock is crouching down. Paper is hands straight up in the air and scissors, you make like a scissor motion with your hands. 
So that's my favorite game one because I know that kids love that and you don't need any materials for those. So this is one of my favorite sensory brain breaks and the kids love doing this one. Um, it's actually not in the <laughs> resource that I gave and actually neither was the rock, paper, scissors one. But so you can get extra ones. So we got more than 25 ideas now. This one I like to call the rainstorm and it's a sensory and listening activity. So nobody talks during this. So basically all they have to do is repeat after you. Everybody can be sitting in their desks. All you have to do is five things. So you're gonna do them in order and then you're gonna do them in reverse order. So the first thing that you do is rub your hands together. And the second thing you'll do after maybe 20, 30 seconds of this is snap your fingers. And if they can't snap their fingers, which happens with the little ones, they can click their tongue. like that and then you're gonna slap your thighs for 20 to 30 seconds and the next one after that you're gonna stomp your feet and then you're gonna reverse the order so stomp the feet slap the thighs snap your fingers or click your tongue And then rub your hands together. And then the last one you can do is... It's a good one to do when you're transitioning from something exciting to something that needs to be more quiet. For the skill building ones, I like to do lots of different things. A lot of times they're vocabulary based. We might do a lot of miming or we might think of rhymes to words. Find a YouTube directed drawing video and draw something or you could draw something on your smart board or under your document camera and they follow along with you. I know I'm giving a lot of ideas here but there are so many options here that you could do. One of my favorite ones is to actually teach them American Sign Language. So you can start with the alphabet. You can find on YouTube lots of videos where they don't even talk and you can practice doing the alphabet with your hand. So A, B, C, D, E. And you sh you could sing the alphabet song if you want, where it has the alphabet song, but you're doing the uh, sign language to teach them that. And then after they learn the alphabet, you could practice with like an example up on the board, how to spell certain words. So it could start off being small words like no or we, oui. and then you say o, u, e. So just spelling with that, that's my favorite one actually. But I don't have another resource to help you out with that, but I can give you a link to another video maybe in the description below or provide it actually in the uh, freebie that I'm going to be using. Okay, and the last one is a relaxing break and my absolute favorite one that I made a mindfulness brain break with uh, and I can put the link in that in the description below. There is one that's in English as well. Um, but I only make French videos on my channel. We watch it one time, then afterwards we do it every once in a while when I really notice that the kids need to calm down. We use our hands as paint brushes and we imagine that we're putting our hands into color to paint of the rainbow. So we first start with red. So we're imagining that we're putting red on our hands and then you put your hands out nice and wide and you breathe in and out like this. So you're breathing in, you paint the rainbow up red and breathe out on the way back down. And then you do the next color, orange. And then you breathe in, paint the rainbow out. And they imagine doing the colors. Now we're gonna do yellow. Let's paint the yellow band. And you keep going through all the, le the colors of the rainbow and that seems to really calm the kids down. Okay, so that's my video all about brain breaks. I hope you learned a little bit about the science of brain breaks, the reason behind why I think it's so important to do them in the classroom. And I've given you a couple of, of examples in this video. If you sign up for the newsletter right now, in the freebie, there will be 25 brain break ideas in addition to the ones that I presented here. And there might be links to other videos on YouTube that you could use to help with those ones. They are in the categories that I presented here today, which is exercising, games, 
sensory breaks, skill building, and relaxing breaks. If you like this content and you want to see more, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified when I make a new video. If you want to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it. You can check out the links in the description below. There is our links to the coffee.com site where you can make a donation or you can or you can become a member of the Meta Mindset channel. If you're interested in making monthly donations, you can do so on Kofi.com or you can do so on the Patreon page. And you will also get access to vocabulary resources and videos. You might get access to stickers and t-shirts if you are a member for a while. This really does help out the channel. So thank you so much to everybody who's already contributed. I really do appreciate it and it really does help the channel. It helps pay for new music, stock videos, stock photos uh, that make the brain break videos. Another video about some more benefits of exercise will be coming out soon. So keep a lookout for that. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And if nobody's told you yet today, you are amazing. And don't you forget it. Thank you so much for watching. A la prochaine.